Well, good. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Miguel Fuentes, and today is Wednesday, the, uh, I think, November the 18th. Um, <clears throat> and uh, today we're going to do a teaching on uh, We Serve the God of Covenant. And uh, this is going to be a good, really good teaching. Um, we're going to be talking about what is a covenant, uh, what God did, uh, what God did with the covenant with the people like Abraham, Noah, which we'll get into. Um, so, yeah. Oh, before we get started, uh, let's go ahead and pray first. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done, Lord. Father, we ask by right now in Jesus' name that you would, uh, Lord, if we have sin in our hearts, Father, Lord, please forgive us. Lord, I pray that you let your word now to avoid. I pray that you let your Holy Spirit convict us if we did anything wrong and that we must repent and uh, change our ways, Lord. Father, we ask right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would uh, um, give us hope, give us peace, give us sound mind. And uh, we thank you, Lord. We, we glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So, uh, I may be a little bit under the weather today. Um, I just took a COVID test probably on Monday. I'm probably be winning the results within uh, probably either tomorrow or Friday. So, I am very, very hopeful. Um, you know, I hope that it goes negative and uh probably, probably a flu that i'm having some flu like symptoms uh so keep me in your prayers um as i'm fighting this 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 disease um and also i am a autoimmune disease myself and it's gonna be a big fight amen so anyway let's go ahead and get into scriptures i'm gonna be reading out the uh modern english version and uh, let's go ahead and read uh, Genesis chapter 9. Genesis chapter 9. And I definitely want to say this. Uh, when Adam and Eve was first been created by God, um, God told um, Adam, like, you know, and he, uh, Adam and he, Eve, and told him, hey, you can eat all these fruits, but you cannot touch that tree, or nor eat their fruit of it. And that is the first uh, contract, or the first covenant with Adam and Eve. And when the serpent deceived Eve, Eve break God's uh, contract and then he gave it to Adam and now he breaks God's contract to the point that God not only cursed the serpent but also cursed Adam and Eve and because of that we see this lineage of destruction because of sin is rampant and now the wild, wild animals are scared to go near us or uh or bears will attack us or lions will attack us we don't have that privilege privilege no more and so because of that now god is looking for a man to keep his covenant and so let's go ahead and read genesis chapter 9 verse 1 and it reads then God blessed Noah and his sons and says to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Every beast of the earth and every bird of the sky and all that moves on the earth and all the fish of the sea will fear you and be terrified of you. See that? They are given into your hands. Every moving thing that lives will be food for you. I give it, so I give you everything just as I gave you the green plant. 
Only you shall not eat flesh with its life, that is, its blood. But for your own lifeblood, I will surely require a reckoning from every animal where I require of it, of man too, where I require a reckoning for human life, of every man for that of his of his fellow men. Whoever shed the blood of man, by the man shall his blood be uh, slain. For God made man in his own image. And as for you, be fruitful and multiply. Increase abundantly in the earth and multiply it. Again, God spoke, spoke to Noah and his, and his sons with him, saying, As for me, I establish my covenant with you. That's a key word. And with your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the livestock, and every beast of the earth with you, of all the, that comes out of the ark, every beast of that earth, I establish my covenant with you. Never again shall I, I'm sorry, never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood. Never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. Then God says, This is the sign of the covenant which I am making between you sorry I am making between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have seen my rainbow, so I have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of a covenant between me and the earth. When I bring a cloud over the, over the earth, the rainbow will be seen in the clouds. Then I will remember my covenant, which is be between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. The rainbow will appear in the clouds, and I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. So God says to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all the flesh that is on the earth. And that's the end, well, not really the end of chapter 9, but of that section. Amazing how God um, do these things. You know, a covenant, which I'll explain later. Let's go ahead and read uh, Genesis chapter 15, uh, verses 1 through 17. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not fear, Abram. I am your shield, your, uh, ex your uh, ex exceedingly great reward. But Abram says, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I am a, sorry, seeing I am childless, and the heir of my house is Ether of Damascus? Abram says, Since you have not given me any, ch any children, my heir is a servant born in my house. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This man will not be your heir, but a son that is from your own body will be your heir. He brought him outside and saw, sorry, and said, Look up towards heaven and count the stars. If you are able to count them, he says, He shall, sorry, he says to him, so will your descendants be? 
Aram believed the Lord and credited it to him as righteousness. He also said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of your of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But Abram says, Lord God, how am I know that I will possess it? So he says to them, Bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old female goat, and sorry, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Then Abram brought all of the of those to him and cut them in two and lay each piece position to another but he did not cut the birds in half when the bird of prey came down on the carcasses Abram drove them away as the sun was going down a deep sleep fell on Abram and terror and great darkness fell on him. Then he says to Abram, Know for certain that your descendants will live as strangers in a land that is not theirs, and they will be enslaved and mistreated for four hundred years. But I will judge the nations that they serve, and afterward they will come out with great possessions. As for you, you will go to your fathers in peace, and you will be buried to a burden at a good old age. In the fourth generation, your descendants will turn here, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not, is not yet completed. This is interesting. I think I think God is prophesying to Abram that the all the Israelites in Egypt will be enslaved and mistreated for four hundred years. Whew, man, that that whew. I don't know about you, that, that that really excites me. When the sun went down and it was dark, a smoky fire uh, pot with a flaming torch passes between these pieces. On that same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I will have given this land from, from the river of Egypt to the great Euphrates River to the land of Kenish. Uh, oh, okay, never mind. I'll just stop there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, you gotta remember... You know, God prophesied. God gave uh, not only a covenant but a prophecy that was fulfilled in Exodus. That you know that they were tortured for four hundred years, they were enslaved for four hundred years. That then Moses came along and you know get them out of Egypt. And I praise God for that. Uh. Psalms 25, Psalms 25, uh, verse 14, the counsel of the Lord is with those who fear him and will n and he will make his covenant known to them okay see god uh through the psalm of david understands that to really have counsel with the lord or having counseling sessions with the lord you got to fear him you got to respect him you got to um Know that he is God, and that he won't. He, you know, he wants to make a covenant with you. Uh, in Psalms, uh, 
Let's see here. Uh, Psalms 105, verse 8. And it reads, He remembers his covenant forever. The word that he commanded to a thousand generations. That covenant he made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac and confirmed to Jacob as a decree and to Israel for a everlasting covenant see that? that that's beautiful let's go ahead and read Jeremiah Jeremiah chapter 33 Verses 14 through 26, and it reads, Surely the days are coming, saying, says the Lord, when I will perform that good word which I have promised to the house of Israel and to the house of, of Judah. In those days, and at that time, I will, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David. And he shall and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the earth. In those days, Judah will be saved, and in in um, in Jerusalem will dwell safety. And this is the name by which she will be called, the Lord, our righteousness. For thus says the Lord, David shall never lack a man to sit on the throne of the house of Israel, nor shall the, Le the Levitical priests lack a man before me to offer birth offering and to kindle grain offerings and to sacrifice continually. The word of the Lord came to, to, to Jeremiah, saying, Thus says the Lord, If you can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, so that there shall not be day and night in their seasons, then also my covenant may be broken with David, my servant, that he shall not have a son to reign on his throne. And with the Levitical priests, my minister, uh, yeah, ministers, as the ho as the host of heaven cannot be numbered, nor the sand of the sea measured, so I will multiply the seed of David, my servant, and the Levites that minister to me. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, Have you not? Consider what this people have spoken, saying, The two families which the Lord has chosen, he has cast them off. Thus they have uh, despised my people, that they shall not, sorry, that they shall be no more a nation before, before them. Thus says the Lord, if my covenant for day and night does not stand, and if I have not appointed the ordinance of heaven and earth, then I will, so, and then I would cast away the seed of, of Jacob and David, my servant, so that I will not take any of his seed to, to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yet I will restore their fortune and have mercy on them. So that this is a a covenant uh, of David, the covenant of David that Jeremiah is speaking. So let's go over with the New Testament. Now the New Testament is different than the Old Testament. However, God changed not in uh, in the book of uh, Malachi, which is pretty interesting, by the way. Um, and we see this in, in uh, Jesus' uh, instructions on doing the Lord's Supper. 
that he says in, in verse 20, 28, For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remissions of sin. See, this is this is the good news. Is that Jesus Christ is that promise. And that we are no longer slaves of sin and death. But now we are slaves of Jesus Christ. That, that's good news. By his blood. That's good news man. I don't know about you. But that, that, I give God glory because of that. Uh, Second Corinthians chapter 3. Second Corinthians chapter three, uh, verses one through eighteen. Do we begin again to com to command ourselves, or do we need, as some others, letters of, uh? Com commendation to you or letters of commendation from you. You are our letters written in our hearts, known and read by all men. For you are permanently de declared to be the letters of Christ. Prepared by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on, but on human tablets of the heart. See that there. We have such trust through Christ, through God, sorry, towards God, not that we are, to, to, uh, a little like trying to pronounce this. Uh, that we are sub satisfied in ourselves to take credit of anything of ourselves, but our supplication is from God, who has made us able ministers of the new covenant, not of the letters, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Ooh, that's good. If the if the ministry that brought death written and graven on stones was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not look intently at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, the glory which was faded away, how would the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? But if the for if the ministry of condemnation is glorious, the ministry of righteousness is much more exceedingly in its in in glory. Even even which was made glorious had no glory in comparison to the glory that excels. For if that which faith was glorious that which remains is much more glorious, seeing then that we have such hope. We speak with great boldness, not as Moses, who put a veil over his head, so that the children of Israel could not look intently at the end of which was faded away. Instead, their minds was blinded, for until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Covenant. The veil which was done away was in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, the veil is in their hearts. Nevertheless, when anyone turns to, to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all see the glory of the Lord with unveiling faces as in a mirror, are being transformed in, in, into the same image, sorry, yeah, same image, from glory to glory by the Spirit of the Lord. 
in Diana chapter chapter three. This is this. I don't know about you. That that's that's powerful. I like in verse. In verse three. Because this is really crucial to understanding the covenant. Is that for you are permanently declared to to be the letter of Christ, prepared by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on human tablets of the heart. See, this is God's God's covenant. Okay, this is the word of God. Now understand. That we must understand what Paul is saying here, because uh, uh, to, to be very frankly, a lot of people, a lot of preachers are, are taking it out of context to the point that they are based in the Bible only. But yet, we as Pentecostals, or, or we as as a spirit filled, born again believers, got to understand that yes, we got to read the Word. But what's more powerful is the letting the Holy Spirit explain to us what the Word of God says. And to, and to help us show an example of what the Word is saying. See, we are not called to just read the Word and study the Word. That's all great. But we are called to be doers of the Word and not just hearers only. It's great that you listen to uh, all your Bibles. But you need more than just hearing all your Bibles. You got to take action to the point that God is, is convicting you and in, in understanding that, that yes, there, there are many lost souls in this world, but yet God wants us to be to do more than just reading, preaching, listening to all your Bibles and all these things. He wants action. He wants action. So... Uh, now, now we'll go ahead and read Hebrews, and then I'll elaborate more. Hebrews chapter eight, last the uh, last scripture. I wanna I wanna show you guys. Hebrews chapter eight, verses five through seven. And it reads, "They serve in a sanctuary that is an example and shadow of the heavenly one, as Moses was instructed by God." When he was able, so he was about to make the tabernacle. See that you make all things according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. But now he was obtained a more exciting ministry because he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established on palm, on, on on better promises. But if the first covenant was been flawless, then no occurrence would have been sought for a second. Okay. Wow. This is this, this is some powerful stuff. Uh, thank you, Lord, for that. So what is a covenant? A covenant is a legal document. That two parties agree on. Yeah, I don't know about you, but God made some covenants with Noah, with with Abraham, with Isaac, with Jacob, with with Moses. And yet Jesus in, in his ministry promised us. That if we're going to be his disciples, you know, deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow him. And to understand that he is the Son of God. He is the Son of God. And so we all must agree. Through his covenant, not just in 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 in, in a uh, rhema word, you know, you know, um, spoken word, God, not just that, but also agreeing with the word of God as well. To be his children, you got you, you know, you got to keep his commandment. You got to abide in Christ 
than in his word. See, in order no two, in order to keep God's covenant, we must do our part. Understand the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not create graven images, shall not take the Lord's name in vain. These examples, the, you know, God gave them ten to the children of Israel. There's ten. If you if you if you if you do these ten, you know, but yet the people were stubborn, people were afraid of uh, of hearing the voice of God, and now they have four hundred plus laws because they refuse to listen with the Lord obviously, I believe. And they fear and they tremble and they do they they you know, they just don't want to do with God and Moses said, Hey, you know, God says more okay, fine. Write these tablets of stone, you know, and but well, once God found out that they were worshiping a golden image of the calf, Moses was mad and breaks all those commandments. All, all those 400 plus commandments. And now he has to come up to Mount Sinai, repent for the people. And now he, now he has to use a, a brand new tablet of stone. But God will not write him for him. He got to listen to him. So he's using like a hammer and a chisel and just, yeah, okay, thou shalt not commit murder. Thou shalt not covet, you know. And all 400 plus laws. It, it, you know, people don't understand that God wants a relationship with us. God has a covenant with us through Christ. And so number three is that God's love is all about keeping his word. If you truly love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, you gotta keep his word. If 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 you know if you you know sinning like like crazy and all that stuff and and, and not having to fear the Lord to walk in holiness unto the Lord, then there's a problem. Maybe Mary, Mary Mary God needs to have a little open heart surgery so that he so that he can rip out whatever spirits that is interfering our our relationship with the Lord. And now God began to you know, you know, God begins to change me as well. You know, I, I realized that, you know, I thought I was worshiping the Lord. I, I was, I thought I was keeping his word, but my actions didn't line up. And I soon realized that the Holy Spirit conviction was so strong to the point that I wept. I wept and I repented. That's how that, 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 that's how powerful it is to be connected with the Lord. And number four, when when, when Solomon says um, the, the last chapters of Ecclesiastes, he says, for, for all this is all in vain, but got one that I definitely want to tell you. Fear God. This is the duty of all men. Fear God. Keep his commandments. That's all he said. So that's the fourth point. Fear God. Keep his covenant. Keep his promise. Keep his word. No matter how bad this world gets. This COVID-19 thing is going out of hand. But yet God is still good. Yet God is still faithful. Yet God is still my protector. Yet God is still my banner. Whoo! God is Jehovah Nessie. God is Jehovah Jireh. God who provides, man. He is Emmanuel, God with us. God is our healer. God is our faithful God. What happened to the fear of the Lord in this country? What happened to the fear of the Lord in, in this country? When, when when Joshua says, for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. What happened to that? That doesn't make no sense if we, if, we, if, we, if we go to church every single day, but yet not doing godly things from Monday to Saturday. No. What happened to that? We losing the fear of the Lord in this country. We losing the fear of the Lord in the churches of today. 
and, 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 and that is my concern. And my heart is aching right now because I can feel God's pain in this country right now. I don't know. I don't. I don't know about you, but we need to repent. We need to turn back with God before it's too late. A lot of people are dying, folks. A lot of people are dying with this with this virus that is going going around. You know, this is not you know Resident Evil that they are dead and now they living again and and start buying people and. You know, repeat the same cycle. Oh, no, there's no such thing as zombies. People are actually dying. And, and the Bible says that after death, judgment. There you go. So, again, I thank guys for watching. I know I, I, love, I, try, I try to make longer videos for you guys so that you can enjoy the Word of God. And also, and also you know, I encourage you, you know, if you have any questions, comment down below. If you got a prayer request, comment down below. I'm with you. We are in this together as a body of Christ. Amen. And go ahead, you know, like, share, share this video. <laughs> Make it go viral. And that and I believe by faith that people will be not only be delivered, but I believe that God can bring people to salvation in Christ. And so Thank God for for watching. I know I'm I'm a little bit uh under weather here, um probably uh, maybe I don't know. I'm just feeling under the weather. I feel chills. I feel my my uh, headaches and stuff. About to turn into a fever. I can feel it um in my body right now. So let's give me your prayers. Um, hope that I can survive this COVID-19. As as everyone knows, I'm a type 1 diabetic. And uh, this is a autoimmune disease. And so it's going to be a tough battle. But I believe by faith that God can heal me. God can give me the strength to overcome it. In Jesus' name. So I thank God for, for watching. May God bless you. I'll see you guys again later.